Okay, chapter 54, to patients, uh, care of patients with musculoskeletal trauma. Oh my god, it's going to be dry and long. Musculoskeletal trauma. <coughs> Musculoskeletal trauma accounts for about two-thirds of all injuries and is one of the primary causes of disability in the United States. It ranges from simple muscle strain to multiple bone fractures with severe tish soft tissue damage. Test. Okay. Fractures. Degrees depending on the severity of the dent. Also affect pressure on nerve endings from edema. In some cases, peripheral nerves are directly damaged as a result of the musculoskeletal injury. Musculoskeletal injury is a correctable event with specific known reasons or specific known risks. An important role in nursing is educating the public about how to prevent musculoskeletal trauma and other types of injury. Fractures. Pathophysiology. A fracture is a break or disruption in the continuity of a bone that affects the human needs for mobility and sensation. It can occur anywhere in the body and at any age. All fractures have the same basic pathophysiology mechanism and require similar patient-centered collaborative care regardless of fracture type or location. Classification of fractures. A fracture is, a, is classified by the extent of the break. A complete fracture. The break is across the entire width of the bone in such a way that the bone is divided into two distant, distinct sections. Incomplete fracture. The fracture does not divide the bone into two portions because the break is through only part of the bone. A fracture is, is described by the extent of associated soft tissue damage as open or compound or closed or simple. So open is uh, also compound or closed is simple. Uh, the skin surface over the broken bone is disrupted in a compound fracture which causes an, causes an external wound. These fractures are often graded to define the extent of tissue damage. Grade 1 is the least severe injury, the skin damage is minimal, and grade 2 an open fracture is uh, accompanied by skin and muscle contusions. The most severe injury is grade 3 in which there is damage to skin, muscle, nerve tissue, and blood vessels. A simple fracture uh, does not extend through the skin and therefore has no visible wound. Uh, figure 54.1 shows common types of fractures. In addition to being identified by type, fractures are described by their cause. A pathologic or spontaneous fracture occurs after minimal trauma to a bone that has been weakened by disease. For example, a patient with bone cancer or osteoporosis can easily have a pathologic fracture. A fatigue or stress fracture results from excessive strain and stress on the bone. This problem is commonly seen in recreational and professional athletes. Compression fractures are produced by a loading force applied to the long axis uh, uh, cancellous bone. Uh, they commonly occur in the vertebrae of patients with osteoporosis and are extremely painful. Stages of bone healing. When a bone is fractured, the body immediately begins the healing process to repair the injury and restore the body's equilibrium. Fractures heal in five stages that are, continu that are continuous process and not single stages. In stage one, within 24 to 72 hours after the injury, a hematoma forms at the site of the fracture because bone is extremely vascular. Uh, stage two occurs in three days to two weeks when granulation tissue begins to invade the hematoma. The, the, this then prompts the formation of fibrocartilage, uh, providing the foundation for bone healing. Stage 3 of bone healing occurs as a result of vascular and cellular pro proliferation. The fracture site is surrounded by new vascular tissue known as callus um, within 2 to 6 weeks. Callus formation is the beginning of a non-bony union. As healing continues in stage 4, the callus is gradually re resorbed and transformed into bone. This stage may take 3 weeks to 6 months. 
during the fifth and final stage of healing, consolidation and remodeling of bone continue to meet mechanical demands. This process may start as early as four to six weeks after fracture and can, and can continue for up to one year, depending on the severity of the injury. Figure 54.2 summarizes the stage, stages of bone healing. In young, healthy adult bone, uh, healing takes about four to six weeks. In older person who has reduced bone mass, healing time is lengthened. Complete healing often takes three to six months or longer. Other factors also affect healing. Examples include the severity of the trauma, the type of bone injury, how the fracture is managed, infections at the fracture site, and ischemic or avascular necrosis, AVN. Considerations for older adults. Bone healing can be affected by the aging process. Bone formations and strength rely on adequate nutrition. Calcium, phosphorus, vitamin D, and protein are necessary for the production of new bone. See chapter 53. For women, the loss of estrogen after menopause decreases the bones uh, or the body's ability to form new bone tissue. Chronic diseases can also affect the rate at which bone heals. For instance, peripheral vascular disease, such as arteriosclerosis, reduce arterial circulation to bone. Thus, the bone receives less oxygen and fewer nutrients, both of which are needed for repair. Complications of fractures. Regardless of the type of lo or location of the fracture, several limb and life-threatening complications can result from the injury. Clinical manifestations of beginning complications must be treated early to prevent serious consequences. In some cases, careful monitoring and assessment can prevent these complications. Acute compartment syndrome, C crush syndrome, hypovolemic shock, fat embolism syndrome, venous thromboembolism, infection, and chronic complications such as ischemic necrosis and delayed union. Acute compartment syndrome. <coughs> Compartments are areas in the body in which muscle, blood vessel, and nerves are contained with, within fascia. Most uh, compartments are located in the extremities. Fascia is an uh, inelastic tissue that surrounds groups of muscles, blood vessels, and nerves. Uh, in the body. Uh, acute compartment syndrome, or ACS, is a serious condition in which increased pressure within one or more compartments reduces circulation to the area. The most uh, common sites for this problem in patients with musculoskeletal trauma are the compartments in the lower leg and forearm. The pathophysiology physiologic changes of increased compartment pressure are sometimes referred to as the ischemic edema cycle. Capillaries within the muscle dilate which raises capillary pressure. Capillaries then become more permeable because of the release of histamine by the ischemic muscle tissue. As a result, plasma proteins leak into the interstitial fluid space and edema occurs. Edema increases pressure on nerve endings and causes pain. Blood flow to the area is reduced and further ischemia uh, results. Sensory deficits or paresthesia generally appear before changes in vascular or motor signs. Uh, the color of the tissue pales and pulses begin to weaken but rarely disappear. The affected area is usually palpably tense and uh, pain occurs with passive motion of the extremity. If the condition is not treated, cyanosis, tingling, numbness, per uh, paresis, and pain, uh, severe pain occur. Chart 54.1 summarizes the sequence of pathophysiologic events in compartment syndrome and the associated clinical assessment findings. The pressure of the, to the compartment can be from an external or internal source. Tight, bulky dressings and casts are examples of ex external pressure. Blood <coughs> or fluid accumulation in the compartment is a common source of internal pressure. The injury or trauma causing the problem is ab above the compartment involved, which decreases blood flow to the more distal area of the injury. ACS is not limited to patients with musculoskeletal problems. It can also occur in those with severe burns, extensive insect bites or snake bites, or massive infiltration of IV fluids. In, this situa in these situations, uh, edema uh, increases internal pressure in one or more compartments. 54.1 Key Features Compartment Syndrome Physiological Change uh, Increased Compartment Pressure Clinical Findings to be No Change uh, Increased Capillary Permeability Clinical Findings would be ede Edema uh, release of histamine would be increased edema. Increased blood flow to area would cause pulses present, pink tissue. Um, pressure on nerve endings would cause pain. Increased tissue pressure would cause referred pain to compartment. Uh, decreased tissue perfusion would be increased edema. Decreased oxygen tissue would be pallor. Increased production of lactic acid would be unequal pulses. Flexed posture. 
uh, anaerobic metabolism would be cyanosis, vasodilation would be increased edema, increased blood flow would be tense muscle swelling, increased tissue pr uh, pressure would be tingling, numbness, uh, and then uh, increased edema would be a paresthesia, uh, muscle ischemia would be in, uh, severe pain unrelieved by drugs, and tissue necrosis would be paresis uh, slash paralysis. Monitor for signs of ACS. Assess for the six P's, including pain, pressure, paralysis, paresthesia, pallor, and pulselessness. That's pain, pressure, paralysis, paresthesia, paresthesia, pallor, and pulselessness, uh, six P's of ACS. Pain is increased even with passive motion and may seem out of proportion to the degree of injury. Numbness and tingling or paresthesia may be the first sign of a problem. The affected extremity is pale and cool as a result of decreased arterial perfusion to the affected area. Capillary refill is an important uh, assessment of perfusion but may not be reliable in an older adult because of arterial insufficiency. Losses of function and decreased pulses or pulselessness are late signs of ACS. Emergency care, acute compartment syndrome. Fortunately, ACS is not common, but it creates an emergency situation when it does occur. Within 46 hours after the onset of compartment syndrome, neurovascular and muscle damage are irreversible. The limb can become useless in 24 to 48 hours. In a few cases, compartment pressure may be uh, monitored on a one-time basis with a handheld device with a digital display or pressure can be monitored continuously. Monitoring is recommended for comatose or unresponsive high-risk patients. If ACS is verified, the surgeon may perform a uh, fasciotomy or opening in the fascia uh, by making an incision through the skin and subcutaneous tissues into the fascia or the affected compartment. This procedure relieves the pressure and restores circulation to the affected area. No consensus exists on what pressure requires fasciotomy, a normal, normal is 0 to 8 mmHg. Uh, compartment pressures must be considered in relation to the patient's hemodynamic status after fascio fasciotomy. Um, the open wound is packed and dressed daily or more often until secondary closure occurs, uh, usually in four to five days, depending on the patient's healing ability. At that time, the surgeon usually debrides the wound and may apply a skin graft to promote healing. Complications of acute uh, compartment syndrome. Problems resulting from compartment syndrome include infection, persistent motor weaknesses, uh, weakness in the affected extremity, contracture, and myoglobinuric renal failure. In extreme cases, amputation becomes necessary. Infection from the necrotic tissue may become uh, severe enough that amputa amputation of the limb is needed. Motor weakness from I injured nerves is not reversible, and the patient may require an orthotic device for uh, assistance in mobility. Volkmann's contractures of the forearm, which can begin within 12 hours of the pressure increase, uh, result from shor shortening of the ischemic muscle and from nerve involvement. Uh, myoglobinuric renal failure from muscle breakdown is a potentially fatal complication of compartment syndrome. It occurs when large or multiple compartments are involved. Injured muscle tissues release myoglobin or muscle protein into the circulation where it can clog the renal tubules and cause acute renal failure. Although the exact pathophysiologic mechanisms are unknown, is, it is suspected that myoglobulin uh, has a direct toxic effect on the kidney. Damage Muscle cells also release potassium, which cannot be excreted because the, of the renal failure. The resulting hyperkalemia uh, may cause dysrhythmias and cardiac arrest. Early recognition of the signs and symptoms of ACS can prevent loss of function or loss of a limb. Identify patients who may be at risk and monitor them closely. ACS can begin in six to eight hours after an injury or take up to two days to appear. If it is suspected, notify the healthcare provider immediately and if possible, implement interventions to relieve the pressure. For example, for the patient with tight, bulky dressings, loosen the bandage or tape. If the patient has a cast, follow agency protocols about who may cut the cast. Crush syndrome. Crush syndrome, or CS, occurs from an external crush injury that compresses one or more compartments in the leg, arm, or pelvis. It is uh, potentially life-threatening. Systemic complications that result from hemorrhage and edema uh, after a severe fracture injury. As muscle becomes ischemic and necrotic from pressure within the compartment, myoglobin is released into circulation where it can occlude the distal renal tubules and result in kidney failure. So, kind of the same.
or similar. Okay, specific causes of CS include twisting type injuries, natural disasters such as earthquakes, work-related injuries such as being trapped under heavy equipment such as a car, drug or alcohol overdose which uh, when one or more limbs may be compressed by body weight for a prolonged time, um, uh, older adults who fall or are unable to get up and lie for a prolonged time, regardless of the cause, CS is indicated by acute compartment syndrome. <coughs> um, Hypovolemia, a decreased circulating blood volume. Hyperkalemia, increased serum potassium. Rhabdomyolysis, uh, or myoglobin release from skeletal muscle into the bloodstream. And acute tub tubular necrosis, or ATN, resulting from hypovolemia and rhabdomyolysis. Uh, dark brown urine, muscle weakness and pain. Assess for signs and symptoms of hypovolemia, hyperkalemia, and uh, compartment syndrome. Management focuses on preventing acute tubular necrosis from myoglobin release and cardiac dysrhythmias related to hyperkalemia. Adequate IV fluids, diuretics, and low-dose dopamine uh, to increase renal perfusion may be prescribed. A uh, urine output of 100 to 200 milliliters per hour is the desired outcome. Uh, K... KX, KX salate uh, may reduce serum potassium adequately, but uh, hemodialysis may be required if potassium levels remain high or kidney failure occurs. Hypovolemic shock, bone is very vascular, therefore there is a risk for bleeding with bone injury. In addition, trauma can cut nearby arteries and cause hemorrhage, resulting in rapidly developing uh, hypovolemic shock. The pathophysiology of hypovolemic shock is, is described in chapter 39. Fat embolism syndrome. Fat embolism syndrome, or FES, is another serious complication in which fat globules are released from the yellow bone marrow into the bloodstream within 12 to 48 hours after an injury or other illness. These globules clog small blood vessels that supply vital organs, most commonly the lungs, and impair organ perfusion. Uh, FES usually results from long bone fractures or fracture repair, but um, occasionally is seen in patients who have a uh, total joint replacement. It may also occur um, all, uh, although less often in those with pancreatitis, osteomyelitis, trauma, or sickle cell anemia. The problem can occur at any age or in either gender, but young men between ages 20 and 40 years and older uh, adults between ages 70 and 80 years are at the greatest risk. Uh, patients with fractured hips have the highest risk, but FES is also common in those with fractures of the pelvis. The earliest manifestations of FES is altered mental status, which is caused by low arterial oxygen level. Assess for decreased level of consciousness, um, LOC, such as uh, drowsiness and sleepiness. Monitor the patient for anxiety, uh, respiratory distress, uh, tachycardia, tachyp tachypnea, fever, and uh, hemoptysis, or bloody sputum. Peteche, uh, a macular, uh, peteche, a macular measles-like rash, may appear over the neck, above arms, or uh, chest and abdomen. This rash is a classic manifestation, but can be a late sign. Monitor uh, laboratory findings, which include increased erythrocyte uh, sedimentation rate, or ESR, decreased um, so it's increased ESR, decreased calcium, serum calcium levels, decreased red blood cell and platelet counts, and increased serum lipase level. These changes in blood values are poorly understood, but they aid in diagnosis of the condition. FES can result in uh, respiratory failure or death, often from pulmonary edema. When the lungs are affected, the complication may be misdiagnosed as pulmonary embolism from a blood clot, chart 54-2. Care of the patient is supportive and similar to the, that for those with pulmonary emboli. Prevention of motion at the fracture site and early immobilization can reduce risk for fat embolism. Chart 54.2, key features, pulmonary emboli, fat embolism versus blood clot embolism. Definition, obstruction of the pulmonary vascular bed by fat uh, globules. Uh, blood clot embolism would be uh, obstruction of the pulmonary artery by blood clot or clots. So. One is obstruction of pulmonary vascular bed by fat globules. The other one is obstruction of pulmonary artery by blood clot or clots. Origin, 95% from fractures uh, of the long bones uh, 
occurs usually within 48 hours. And that's for fat embolism. Uh, blood clot embolism would be 85% from deep vein thrombosis in legs or pelvis can occur any time. Uh, for fat embolism assessment findings, altered mental status, earliest sign, uh, increased respirations, pulse, temperature, chest, chest pain, dyspnea, crackles, decreased uh, SAO2, petechiae, 50-60%, retinal hemorrhage, not common, mild thrombocytopenia. And for uh, DVT or uh, blood clot be uh, same as for fat embolism except no petechiae. Treatment for fat embolism would be uh, bed rest, gentle handling, oxygen, hydration, IV fluids, possibly steroid therapy, fracture immobilization. And for uh, blood embolism would be preventative measures, e.g. leg exercises, anti-embolism stockings, SCDs, uh, bed rest, oxygen, possible mechanical ventilation, anticoagulants, thromboemboli uh, thrombolytics, um, and uh, possible surgery, pulmonary embolectomy, venocaval umbrella. Venous thromboembolism. Venous thromboembolism, or VTE, includes deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and its major complications, pulmonary embolism, PE. It is the most common complication of lower extremity surgery or trauma, and the most often fatal complication of musculoskeletal surgery. Factors that make patients with fractures most likely to develop VTE include cancer or chemotherapy, surgical uh, procedures longer than 30 minutes, history of smoking, obes obesity, heart disease, prolonged immobility, uh, oral contraceptives or hormones, history of VTE complications, uh, older adults, especially with hip fractures. A discussion of the prevention assessments and uh, management of VTE is found in Chapter 38. Thank God. Infection. Whenever there is trauma to tissues, the body's defenses uh, system is disrupted. Wound infections are the most common type of infection resulting from orthopedic trauma. They range from superficial skin infections to deep wound abscesses. Infection can also be caused by implanted hardware used to repair a fracture surgically, such as pins, plates, or rods. Clostridial infections can result in gas gangrene, or tetanus and can prevent the bone from healing properly. Bone infection or osteomyelitis is most common with open fractures in which skin integrity is lost and often and after surgical repair of a fracture. For patients experiencing this type of trauma, the risk for hospital acquired infections is increased. These infections are common and many uh, are from multiple drug resistant organisms such as methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA. Uh, reducing MRSA infections is a primary outcome for all healthcare agencies. Uh, chapter 25 discusses the prevention and assessment of management of, of infection. Chronic complications. Ischemic necrosis uh, and delayed bone healing are later complications of musculoskeletal trauma. Ischemic necrosis is uh, sometimes referred to as a septic or a vascular necrosis, AVN, or osteonecrosis. But blood supply to the bone is disrupted, leading to to the death of the bone tissue. This problem is most often uh, a complication of hip fractures or any fracture in which there is displacement of bone. Surgical repair of fractures also ca can cause necrosis because the hardware can interfere with circulation. Patients on long-term corticosteroid therapy such as prednisone are also at high risk for ischemic necrosis. Um, delayed union is a, fraction, is a fracture that has not healed within six months of injury. Such fractures never achieve union. That is, uh, they never completely heal or non-union. Other heal, uh, others heal incorrectly or called a malunion. Uh, these problems are most common in patients with tibial fractures, fractures that involve many treatment techniques, e.g. a cast and traction, and pathologic uh, fractures. Uh, union uh, may also be delayed or not achieved in the older patient. If bone does not heal, he or she typically has chronic pain and immobility from deformity. Etiology and genetic risk. The primary cause of a fracture is trauma from a motor vehicle crash or fall, especially in older adults. The trauma may be a direct blow to the bone or an indirect force from muscle contraction or pulling forces on the bone. Support vigorous or sports, vigorous exercise, and malnutrition are contributing factors. Bone diseases uh, such as osteoporosis uh, increase the risk of a fracture in older adults. See chapter 53. Genetic factors that increase risk for uh, fracture are d discussed with the specific health problems throughout this text. Incidence prevalence. The incidence of fractures depends on the location of the injury. Rib fractures are the most common type in the adult population. Femoral shaft fractures off, uh, occur most often in young and middle-aged adults. Uh, the incidence of proximal 
uh, femur or hip fractures is highest in older adults. Humeral fractures are common in uh, adults. Uh, in adult, the older the person, usually the more proximal is the fracture. Uh, wrist or colis fractures are typically seen in middle and late adulthood. Health promotion and maintenance. Uh, airbags and seat belts have decreased the number of severe injuries and deaths, but they have increased the number of leg and ankle fractures, especially in older adults. Encourage people to use seat belts and support legislation for improved vehicle design and a reevaluation of the federal standards for motor vehicle safety. Health teaching should also focus on other risks for musculoskeletal injury, including osteoporosis, screening and education, fall prevention, home safety assessment and modification if needed, drug safety prescribed over-the-counter and illicit, older adults and driving, uh, helmet use when riding bicycles, motorcycles, ATVs, and skateboards. Um, these educational interventions are discussed throughout the book and in other texts. Patient-centered collaborative care assessment history. If the patient is in severe pain, delay the interview until he or she is more comfortable. Then ask about the cause of the fracture, which helps in developing an individualized plan of care. Some type of force, such as incisional, crush, acceleration, or, dis or deceleration, and shearing and friction, leads uh, to most muscular low skeletal injuries. As a result, severe, uh, several body systems are often affected. Incisional injuries, uh, as from a knife wound, and crush injuries cause hemorrhage and decrease blood flow to major organs. Acceleration or deceleration injuries cause direct trauma to the spleen, brain, kidneys, uh, and kidneys when these organs are moved from their fixed locations in the body. Shearing and friction damage uh, the skin and cause a high level of wound contamination. Asking about the events leading to the injury uh, helps... Um, identify which forces have been ex uh, experienced and therefore which body systems or parts of the body to as assess. For example, forward fall often results in coles fracture of the wrist because the person tries to catch himself or herself uh, with an outstretched hand. Knowing the mechanism of injury also helps determine whether other types of injuries such as head or spinal cord injury might be present. A drug history, including substance abuse, is important regardless of the patient's age. For example, a young adult may have had an excessive amount of alcohol, which contributed to a motor vehicle crash or to a fall at the work site. Many older adults also consume alcohol and an assortment of prescribed and over-the-counter drugs, which can cause dizziness and loss of balance. A medical history may identify possible causes of the fracture and give clueless, clues as to how long it will take for the bone to heal. Certain diseases, such as bone cancer and uh, Paget's disease, cause... Um, uh, pathologic uh, fractures that often do not achieve total healing or union. Ask about the patient's occupation and rec recreational activities. Some occupations are more hazardous than others. For instance, construction work is potentially more physically dangerous than office work. Certain hobbies and recreational activities are also extremely hazardous, such as skiing. Contact sports such as football and ice hockey often result in musculoskeletal injuries, including fractures. Other activities do not have such an obvious potential for injury, but can cause fractures nonetheless. For instance, daily jogging or running can lead to fatigue fractures because inadequate nutrition contributes to fractures and can interfere with bone healing. Conduct a nutritional screening. If the patient has nutrition deficits, uh, collaborate with a nutritionist to take a complete history and nutritional assessment. Chart 54.3, best practice for patient safety and quality care. Assessment of neurovascular status in patients with musculoskeletal injury. Assessment technique, skin color. Inspect the er area distal to the injury. Normal findings, no change in pigmentation compared with other parts of the body. Skin temperature, palpate the area distal to the injury. The dorsum of the hands is most sensitive to temperature. Uh, normal findings would be the skin is warm. Uh, movement, ask the patient to move the affected area or the area distal to the injury. Active motion, uh, the patient can move without discomfort would be normal. Move the area distal to the injury, that would be passive motion, and that would be no difference in comfort compared with active movement. Uh, sensation, ask the patient if numbness or tingling is present, paresthesia, uh, no numbness or tingling. Uh, palpate with a paper clip, especially the web space between the first and second toes or the web space between the thumb and forefinger. Uh, normal would be no difference in sensation in the, infected, uh, in the affected and unaffected extremities. Loss of sensation in these areas indicates perineal, uh, perineal nerve or median nerve damage. Pulses, 
palpate the pulses uh, distal to the injury. Pulses are strong and easily palpated. No difference in the affected and unaffected extremities is good. Okay, a capillary refill, least reliable. Uh, would be press the nail bed distal to the injury until blanching occurs for the skin near the nail if the nails are thick and brittle. Or, or the skin near the nail if the nails are thick and brittle. Uh, blood returns return to usual color within three to five seconds is normal. Five, or five seconds for uh, older adults or older patients. Pain. Ask the p patient about the location, nature, and frequency of the pain. Pain is usually localized and is often described as stabbing or throbbing. Pain out of proportion to the injury and unrelieved to analgesics might indicate compartment syndrome. Physical assessment, clinical manifestations. The patient with a fracture often has trauma to other body systems. Consequently, assess all major body systems first for life-threatening complications, including head, chest, and abdominal injuries. The assessment of these areas is described elsewhere in the text. When uh, inspecting the site of a possible fracture, look for a change in bone alignment. The bone may appear deformed or a limb may be uh, internally or externally rotated. Uh, observe for extremity shortening or a change in bone shape. Ask the patient to gently move the involved body part or area distal to or below the injury. If pa pain occurs, stop the movement immediately. When the affected part is moved, assess for crepitus, a grating sound created by bone fragments. Range of motion, ROM, is typically decreased. Yeah, duh. If the skin is intact, closed fracture, the area over the fracture may be uh, ecumatic or bruised from bleeding into the underlying soft tissue. Subcutaneous uh, emphysema, uh, or the appearance of bubbles under the skin because of air trapping, is uh, not uncommon but is usually seen later. Uh, Swelling at the fracture site is rapid and can result in marked neurovascular compromise. Perform a thorough neurovascular assessment and pr compare extremities. Assess skin color and temperature, sensation, mobility, pain, and pulses distal to the fracture site. If the fracture involves an extremity, check the nails for capillary refill by applying pressure to the nail and observing for the s speed of the blood return. If nails are brittle or thick, assess the skin next to the nail. Check that for capillary refill is not as reliable as other indicators for perfusion. Chart 54.3 describes the procedure for a neurovascular assessment which evaluates circulation, movement, and sensation, CMS. For an open fracture, de uh, determine the degree of soft tissue damage and the amount of bleeding. The area may be lightly palpated for tenderness, but wear a sterile glove if the skin is broken. Patients often report moderate to severe pain at the site of the fracture or in an adjacent or distal area. For example, those with a fractured hip may have groin pain or pain referred to the back of the knee. Uh, of the knee. Pain is usually due to muscle spasms and edema, which result from the fracture. In patients with one or more fractured ribs, several pain Occur, uh, severe pain occurs when deep breaths are taken. Uh, assess respiratory status, which may be severely compromised from pain, or pneumothorax, which is air in the pleural cavity. For fractures of the shoulder and upper arm, the physical assessment is best done with the patient in a sitting or standing position, if possible, so that shoulder drooping or other abdominal positioning can be seen. Support the affected arm and flex the elbow to promote comfort during the uh, assessment. For more uh, distal areas of the arm, perform the assessment with the patient in a supine position so that the uh, extremity can be elevated to reduce swelling. It <coughs> Place the patient in a supine position for assessment of the legs and pelvis. A patient with an impacted uh, hip fracture may be able to walk <clears throat> for a short time after injury, although this is not recommended. Some fractures can cause internal organ damage resulting in hemorrhage. When a pelvic fracture is uh, suppressed, um, assess vital signs. Or, uh, when a pelvic fracture is suspected, assess vital signs, skin color, and level of consciousness for indications of possible hypovolemic shock. Check the urine for blood which indicates damage to urinary system often the bladder if the patient cannot void suspect that the bladder or urethra has been damaged NCLEX examination challenge and coordination of care uh, a 30 year old man arrives at the emergency department via ambulance he ha was the driver of a motorcycle involved in a collision with the SUV paramedics report that the patient was hit from the side the bike fell on him and he was trapped underneath the vehicle initial reports from the ambulance en route describe a person in shock with a mangled left leg below the knee and a uh, left wrist fracture. The patient was wearing a helmet at the time of the crash. What information given about given above is helpful in predicting other injuries this patient may, may have. What are the priority assessments you should perform when he arrives at the hospital? With what aspects of care for this patient can you ask the emergency department technician to assist? And with what 
other members of the healthcare team should you collaborate? What initial assessments of the injured leg should you perform? Psychosocial assessment. The psychosocial uh, status of a patient with a fracture depends on the extent of the injury and the other complications. Uh, hospitalization is not required for a single uncomplicated fracture and the patient returns to usual daily activities within a few days. In contrast, the patient suffering multiple traumas may be hospitalized for weeks and may undergo many surgical procedures, treatments, and prolonged rehabilitation. These disruptions in lifestyle can create a high level of stress. The stresses that result from a chronic condition affect uh, relationships between the patient and member, family members or friends. Assess these feelings and ask about how they coped with previously experienced stressful events. Body image and sexuality may be altered by deformity. Treatment modalities for fracture repair or long-term immobilization. Uh, laboratory assessment. No special laboratory tests are available for assessment of fractures. Hemoglobin and hematocrit levels may often be low because of bleeding caused by the injury. If extensive soft tissue damage is present, the erythrocyte uh, sedimentation rate may be elevated, which indicates the expected inflammatory response. If this uh, value increases uh, during fracture healing, the patient may have a bone infection. During the healing stages, serum, calcium, and phosphorus levels are often increased as the bone releases these elements into the blood. Imaging assessment. The Healthcare provider requests standard x-rays and uh, tomograms to confirm a diagnosis of fracture. These reveal the bone disruption, mal uh, malalignment, or deformity. If the x-ray film does not show a fracture but the patient is symptomatic, the x-ray is usually repeated with additional views. The CT scan is useful in detecting fractures of complex structures such as the hip and pelvis. It also identifies compression fractures of the spine. Magnetic resonance imaging, uh, MRI, is Useful in determining the amount of soft tissue damage that may have occurred with the fracture is also very helpful in visualizing AVN. I can't remember what AVN is. Whatever. Analysis. Common nursing diagnosis and collaborative problems. The priority nursing diagnosis for patients with fractures are risk for peripheral neuro, uh, neurovascular dysfunction related to fractures, bone and soft tissue trauma, acute pain related to biologic injury, uh, bone disruption, soft tissue damage, muscle spasm and edema, risk for infection related to trauma, impaired physical mobility related to pain, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to additional metabolic need for healing of bone and soft tissues. Additional nursing diagnosis and uh, collaborative problems. In addition to the common nursing diagnosis, patients with fractures may have one or more of these diagnoses. Activity intolerance related to the pain and impaired mobility, constipation related to opioids and prolonged immobility, particularly in older adults, ineffective coping related to a prolonged immobility, hospitalization or lifestyle changes, compromised family coping related to prolonged hospitalization or lifestyle changes, self-care deficit related to pain and immobility, disturbed body image related to deformity and or treatment modality, sexual dysfunction related to pain and immobility, sleep deprivation related to chronic pain or prolonged hospitalization, fear related to possible nursing home placement or death, particularly in older adults, impaired skin injury and impaired tissue integrity related to bone injury and immobility. The collaborative problems that may apply for patients with severe uh, fractures include um, potential for acute compartment syndrome, potential for hypovolemic shock, potential for fat embolism syndrome, potential for venous thromboembolism, potential for ischemic uh, necrosis, and potential for delayed healing, malunion or nonunion. Planning and implementation, risk for potential or peripheral neuro neurovascular dysfunction. Risk for peripheral neurovascular dysfunction. Planning and expected outcomes. The patient, the patient with a uh, fracture is expected to have adequate blood flow through the small vessels of the extremities to maintain tissue function. Indicators include that the patient will have normal capillary refill, sensation, skin color, muscle function, extremity co skin color, and pedal pulses. Uh, interventions. A fracture can happen anywhere and may be accompanied by multiple injuries to vital organs. Collaborative management of the patient depends on the severity and extent of the injury and to the number of fractures the patient has. Emergency care. Fracture. For any patient who I experiences trauma in the community, first call 911 and assess the airway, breathing, and circulation uh, 
primary survey. Then uh, uh, provide life-saving care if needed before being concerned about the fracture. After a head-to-toe assessment, secondary survey, um, assess the fracture injury. If the person is clothed, cut away clothing from the fracture site and remove any jewelry from the affected extremity. Control bleeding by direct pressure on the area and digital pressure over the artery above the fracture. Direct pressure on the area and digital pressure over the artery above the fracture. At the same time, to prevent shock, place the patient in a supine position and keep him or her warm. Best practice for patient safety and quality care. Emergency care of the patient with an extremity fracture. Assess the patient's airway, breathing, and circulation. Perform a quick head-to-toe assessment. Remove the patient's clothing. Cut if necessary to inspect the affected area while supporting the area above the uh, above and below the injury. Do not remove shoes because this can cause increased trauma. Okay, don't take your shoes off. Um, Remove jewelry on the affected extremity in case of swelling. Apply direct pressure on the area if there is bleeding and pressure over the proximal artery nearest the fracture. Uh, keep the patient warm and in a supine position. Check the neurovascular status of the area distal to the extremity, temperature, color, sensation, movement, and capillary refill. Uh, compare affected and unaffected limbs. Immobilize the extremity by splinting. Uh, include joints. Uh, above and below the fracture site, recheck circulation after splinting. Uh, mobilize the extremity by splinting, include joints above and below the fracture site, uh, recheck circulation after splinting. Cover any open areas with dressing, preferably sterile. In collaboration with the 911 emergency team, inspect the fracture site for intactness of skin, swelling, and deformity, e.g., shortening and rotation. Palpate the area lightly to determine temperature, coolness, decrease sensation and blanching. Assess distal pulses by comparing affected and unaffected extremities, if applicable. Assess for motor function by asking the patient to move an area below the fracture. Uh, for example, if a femur fracture is suspected, ask him or her to move the ankle and foot on the affected side. The uh, upper portion of the leg should remain, uh, should remain still. The upper portion of the uh, leg should, should remain still. To prevent uh, further damage, reduce pain, and increase circulation, the emergency team immobilizes uh, the uh, area of the fracture by splinting. Any object or device that extends to the joints above and below the fracture to immobilize it can be used as a splint. Sterile gauze is placed loosely over the open areas to prevent further contamination of the wound. Neurovascular assessment is rechecked after splinting. In the emergency department, phys physician's office or urgent care center, fracture management begins with reduction and immobilization of the fracture. Reduction or alignment of the bone ends uh, for proper healing is accomplished by a closed method, e.g. cast, or an open surgical procedure. Immobilization is achieved by the use of bandages, casts, traction, internal fixation, or external fixation. The healthcare provider selects the treatment method on the basis of the type, location, and extent of the fracture. These interventions prevent further injury and reduce discomfort. Non-surgical management. Non-surgical management includes closed reduction and immobilization with a bandage, splint, cast, or traction. For each modality, the primary nursing concern is assessment and prevention of neurovascular dysfunction or compromise. Assess the patient's neurovascular status every, four, every hour for the first 24 hours and every one to four hours thereafter, uh, depending on the injury. The patient uh, usually reports discomfort that is unrelieved by analgesics if the bandage, splint, or cast is too tight. Elevate the fractured extremity higher than the heart and apply ice for the first 24 to 48 hours as needed to reduce edema. Interventions activities. The patient at risk for peripheral ne uh, neurovascular dysfunction. Circulatory care. Uh, arterial insufficiency slash venous insufficiency. Promotion of arterial and venous circulation. Perform a comprehensive appraisal of peripheral circulation, e.g. Uh, check peripheral pulses, uh, edema, capillary refill, color, and temperature. Monitor degree of discomfort or pain. Protect the extremity from injury. Place the extremity in a dependent position as appropriate. Peripheral sensation management. Prevention or minimization of injury or discomfort in the patient with altered sensation. <coughs> Monitor for paresthesia, numbness, tingling, hyper, uh, hyper 
hyper hyperesthesia and hypoesthesia. Okay. Um, monitor fit of pressing devices, prosthesis, shoes, and clothing. Administer, uh, administer, administer analgesics as necessary. Discuss or identify causes of abnormal sensations or sensation changes. Hmm. Back to the text. A, clo <coughs> A closed reduction. Closed reduction is the most common non-surgical method for managing a simple fracture. While applying a manual pull or traction on the bone, the healthcare provider moves the bone and so that they realign. Anesthesia or an analgesia is typically used during this procedure to decrease pain. An x-ray shows that the bone ends are approximated or aligned before the bone is immobilized. Bandages and splints. For certain areas of the body, such as the scapula or shoulder and clavicle or collarbone, an elastic bandage or commercial immobilizer may be used to keep the bone in place during healing. Be because upper extremity bones do not bear weight, splints uh, may be sufficient to keep bone fragments in place for a closed fracture. Uh, figure 54.3 shows the wrist splint for fracture immobilization. Thermoplastic, a, a durable, flexible material for splinting, also uh, allows custom fitting to the patient's body part. Casts. For more complex fractures or fractures of the lower extremity, the physician or orthopedic technician applies a cast to hold bone fragments in place after reduction. A cast is a uh, rigid uh, device that uh, immobilizes the affected body part while allowing other body parts to move. It also allows early mobility and reduces pain, although its most common use is for fractures. A cast may be applied for correction of deformities, e.g. a club foot, or for prevention of deformities, e.g. those seen in some patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, several types of materials are used to make casts. The traditional plaster of Paris cast requires application of a wet fitted stocking net under the material. Uh, if the stocking net is too tight, it may impair circulation. If it is too loose, wrinkles can lead to the development of pressure ulcers. Padding is applied over the stocking net, uh, followed by a wet plaster roll wrapped around the extremity or other body part. The cast feels hot because an immediate chemical reaction occurs, but it soon becomes damp and cool. This type of cast takes 24 to 72 hours to dry, depending on the size and location of the cast. A wet cast feels cold, smells musty, and is grayish. The cast is dry when it feels hard and firm, is odorless, and has a shiny white appearance. In a, on occasion, the plaster cast may have rough edges, which can crumble and cause skin irritation. Pedaling the cast resolves this problem if the underlying stockinette does not... Um, cover the edges of the cast. Small strips of tape are placed over the rough edges to protect the skin. If the skin under the cast is open, the health provi care provider, orthopedic technician, or specially trained nurse cuts a window into the cast so that the wound can be observed and cared for. The piece of cast removed to make the window must be retained and replaced after wound care to prevent localized edema in the area. This is most important when a window is cut from a cast on an extremity. Tape or elastic bandage wrap may be used to keep the window in place. A window is also an access for taking pulses, re removing uh, wound drains, or preventing abdominal distension when the patient is in a body or speaker cast. If the cast is too tight, it may cut off the cast may, may be cut with a cast cutter to relieve pressure or allow tissue swelling. The healthcare provider may choose to uh, bivalve the cast, i.e., cut it lengthwise into two equal pieces. If bone healing is almost complete, okay, yeah, if it's almost complete, either half of the cast can be removed for inspection or uh, for provision of care. Two halves are then held in place by an elastic bandage wrap. Synthetic materials for casts include fiberglass and polyester cotton uh, knit. Uh, these materials are lighter than plaster and require minimal drying time. Fiberglass casts are dry in 15 to 10 minutes and can bear uh, weight 30 minutes after application. Polyester cotton knit casts take 7 minutes to dry and can withstand bearing weight bearing in about 20 minutes. Some 
Our healthcare providers use synthetic casts for upper extremities and plaster repairs casts for lower extremities because plaster casts can bear more weight for a longer time. However, synthetic casts are used much more commonly overall. Casts can be uh, generally divided into four main groups, arm casts, leg casts, uh, cast braces, and body or speaker casts. Uh, table 54.1 describes specific casts that are used for various parts of the body. Uh, when a patient is in bed with an arm cast, teach him or her to elevate the arm above the heart to reduce swelling. The hand should be higher than the elbow. Uh, ice may be prescribed for the first 24 to 48 hours. Uh, when the patient is out of bed, the arm is supported with a sling uh, placed around the neck to alleviate fatigue caused by the weight of the cast. The sling should distribute the weight over a large area uh, of the shoulders and trunk. Uh, not just the neck. Uh, some healthcare providers prefer that the patient not use a sling after the first few days in an arm cast, particularly a short arm cast. This encourages normal movement of the mobile joints and enhances bone healing. A leg cast allows mobility and requires um, the patient to use ambulatory aids such as crutches, a cast shoe or sandal or boot, that attaches to the foot or a rubber walking pad attaches to the sole of the cast assisting in ambulation if weight bearing is allowed and helps prevent damage to the cast. Each uh, uh, Teach the patient to elevate the affected leg on several pillows to reduce swelling and apply uh, ice for the first 24 hours or as prescribed. Types of cast so used for musculoskeletal trauma Upper extremity cast be a short arm cast, an SAC, extends from below the elbow to the including part of the hand, stable fracture, use for stable fractures of the wrist, metacarpals, carpals, and distal radius. There's a long arm cast, an LAC, includes the upper arm to and, uh, or the upper arm to and including part of the hand, uh, unstable fractures of the wrist, distal, humerus, radius, or ulna. There's a hanging arm cast, same as LAC, but heavier with added loop at the mid forearm. Fractures of the humerus that cannot be aligned by LAC or light traction is possible uh, while the patient is in bed or by attached strap that extends around the neck. A thumb speaker or gauntlet cast uh, similar to SAC with the thumb casted in abduction uh, fractures of the thumb. Shoulder speaker cast. The shoulder is casted in uh, abduction with the elbow flexed. Uh, unstable fractures of the shoulder, girdle, or humerus. Dislocations of the shoulder is what that's for. Uh, lower extremity cast. Short leg cast, SLC. From below the knee to the base of the toes. You'd be fracture of the ankle, metatarsals, or foot for that one. Uh, lo long leg cast from the upper mid upper thigh to the base of the toes would be unstable fractures of the tibia, fibula, or ankle. A walking cast, a walking device on the bottom of SLC or LLC. Um, that would be same as for L SLC or LLC. Leg cylinder, similar to LS uh, SLC, but the ankle and foot are not casted. So that would be a stable fractures of the tibia, fibula, or knee. Uh, long cylinder, or long leg cylinder, uh, similar to LLC, but the ankle and foot are not casted. Okay, that's what the other one was. Whatever. Stable fractures of the distal femur proximal tibia or knee so it would be just a little longer than the cylinder patellar or cast braces or brace casts patellar weight bearing cast similar to SLC or leg cylinder be a mid shaft or distal shaft fractures of the femur uh, external polycentric knee hinge cast a hinge connects the lower and upper leg and allows 90 degree movement of knee flexion same as for the patellar weight bearing cast. Body casts. A hip spica, a spica, 
extends from below the nipple line down the affected leg uh, single down the leg and half of the unaffected leg one and a half or down both legs double uh, that would be dislocation of the hip pelvic or hip injuries a recircast or recircast would be the body jacket extends from the shoulders to beyond the iliac crest and hips with a large opening over the anterior chest uh, so that'd be for scoliosis, thoracic spinal fractures. And then there's a halo cast. The body jacket contains a halo, bra halo brace. That's for fractures of the cervical spine. A cast brace allows the patient to bend unaffected joints while the fracture is healing. The fracture must show signs of healing and little tissue edema before this cast is applied. Uh, two cylindric casts are made and connected by a hinge to allow joint movement. As healing occurs, the casts may be removed and replaced with a soft brace. Commercial immobilizers, which serve the same function as a cast brace, are available and often used instead. A body cast encircles the trunk of the body. A speaker cast encases a portion of the trunk and one or two extremities. A patient with either of these casts presents a special challenge for nursing care. Potential complications related to severe impairment in, in mobility include skin breakdown, uh, respiratory dysfunction such as pneumonia and uh, atelectasis, um, constipation, joint contractures, cast syndrome, um, superior mesenteric artery syndrome. An uncommon but serious uh, complication is most often seen in orthopedic patients who have been placed in a hip speca or body cast. Partial or complete upper intestinal obstruction results in classic symptoms, abdominal distension, epigastric pain, nausea, and vomiting. The vomiting often occurs after meals and patients may have normal bowel sounds. Partial obstruction occurs initially from compression of the third uh, portion of the duodenum between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. Um, this can progress to complete obstruction from duodenal edema uh, caused by continued vomiting and distension. Placing a window in the abdominal portion of the cast or bivalving the cast may be sufficient to prevent or relieve pressure on the duodenum. Uh, management of intestinal obstruction is the same as for any patient with this complication. Cast care. Before the cast is applied, explain the purpose of the cast and the procedure for its application. With a plaster cast, warn the patient about the heat that will be felt immediately after the wet cast is applied. Do not cover the new cast. Uh, allow for air drying. When moving a patient with a wet plaster cast, handle it with the palms of the hands to prevent indentations and uh, resulting uh, areas of pressure on the skin. Turn him or her every one to two hours to allow air to circulate and dry all parts of the cast. Be sure to remind unlicensed uh, assistive personnel uh, UAP and the family that the cast is wet and requires special handling. If the health care provider requests that the cast be elevated to reduce swelling, use a cloth covered pillow instead of one encased in plastic, which could cause the cast to retain heat and prevent drying. Evaluation of the casted extremity reduces edema but may impair arterial circulation to the affected limb. Therefore, neurovascular assessment of the limb distal to or below the cast is very important. For preventing contamination by urine or feces, the perennial area of a dry long leg or body cask may be covered in plastic. Fracture pans uh, are preferred over traditional bed pans because they are smaller and more comfortable. Remind UAP to take care to prevent spillage onto the cast. Check to ensure that the cast is not too tight and frequently monitor neurovascular status usually every hour for the first 24 hours after application if the patient is hospitalized. You should be able to insert a finger between the cast and the skin. Uh, ice 
may be applied for the first 24 to 36 hours to reduce swelling and inflammation. Once the plaster cast is dry, inspect it uh, at least once every eight hours for drainage, cracking, uh, crumbling, uh, alignment, and fit. Plaster casts uh, act like sponges and absorb drainage, whereas synthetic casts act like a wick, pulling drainage away from the drainage site. Okay. Um, padding also absorb uh, padding can also absorb wound drainage. Uh, document in the medical record drainage on any cast. Um, however, sources disagree on whether drainage should be circled on the cast because uh, it may increase anxiety and is not a reliable indicator of drainage amount. Immediately report to the healthcare provider any sudden increase in the amount of drainage or change in the integrity of the cast. After swelling decreases, it is not uncommon for the cast to become loose and need replacement. If the patient is not admitted to the hospital, provide instructions regarding cast care. Cast complications. During hospitalization, assess for other complications resulting from uh, casting that can be serious and life-threatening, such as infection, circulation impairment, and peripheral nerve damage. If the patient returns home after cast application, teach him or her how to monitor for these complications and when to notify the health care provider. Infection most often results from the breakdown of skin under the cast pressure necrosis. If pressure necrosis occurs, the patient uh, typically reports a very painful hot spot under the cast, and the cast may feel warmer in the affected area. Teach the patient or family to smell the area for mustiness or an unpleasant odor that would indicate infected material. If the infection progresses, a fever may develop. Circulation, impairment, and peripheral nerve damage can result from the tightness of the cast. Teach the patient to assess for circulation at least daily, including the ability to move the area distal to the extremity, numbness, and increased pain. The patient with a cast may be immobilized for a prolonged period, depend, uh, depending on the extent of the fracture and the type of cast. Assess for uh, complications of immobility, such as skin breakdown, pneumonia, atelectasis, uh, thromboembolism and constipation. Before the cast is removed, inform the patient that the cast cutter will not uh, injure the skin, but that heat may be felt during the procedure. Because of the prolonged immobilization, because of prolonged immobilization, a joint may become contracted, usually in a fixed state of flexion. Osteoarthritis and osteoporosis may develop from lack of weight bearing. Muscle can also atrophy uh, from lack of exercise during prolonged immobilization of the affected body part, usually in a, an extremity. Traction. Traction is the application of a pulling force to a body, to a part of the body to provide reduction, alignment, and rest. It is also used to decrease muscle spasm, thus relieving pain, and prevent or correct deformity and tissue damage. A patient in traction is usually hospitalized, but in some cases, home care is possible even for skeletal, tra skeletal traction. Mechanical traction can be either continuous, as in fracture treatment, uh, intermittent, intermittent for relief of muscle spasm and other types of musculoskeletal neurologic trauma, such as cer cervical nerve root compression. Uh, traction may also be classified as running traction or balanced suspension. In running traction, the pulling force is in one direction and the patient's body acts as counter traction. Moving the body or bed position can alter the counter traction force. Uh, balanced suspension provides the counter traction so that the pulling force of the traction is not altered when the bed or patient is moved. This allows for increased movement and facilitates care. Okay. Traction is typically one of five types. Skin traction, skeletal traction, plaster traction, brace traction, or circumferential circumferential traction. Skin traction involves the use of a Velcro boot or Bucks traction, a belt or halter, which is usually uh, secured 
around the affected leg. The primary purpose of skin traction is to decrease painful muscle spasms that accompany fractures. Uh, the weight is used as a pulling force and is limited to 5 to 10 pounds or 2.3 to 4.5 kilograms to prevent injury to the skin. In skeletal traction, pins, wires, tongs, uh, e.g. crutch field, or screws are surgically inserted directly into bone. These uh, allow the use of longer traction time and heavier weights usually 15 to 30 pounds. Uh, skeletal traction aids in bone realignment. Pin site care is an important part of nursing management to prevent infection. Plaster traction combines skeletal traction and a plaster cast. A brace traction device exerts a pull, f a pull for correction of uh, alignment deformities. Circumfer circumferential traction <sighs> Uh, circumferential traction uses a belt around the body, such as pelvic traction, for low back problems. Uh, table 54.2 describes commonly used types of traction for various body parts of the body. Okay. The nurse may set up or assist in the setup of traction if specially educated. In larger or specialty hospitals or units, orthopedic technicians or physicians' assistants often set up traction. Once traction is applied, maintain the correct balance between traction pull and counter traction force. Weights usually are not removed without a prescription. They should not be lifted manually or allowed to rest on the floor. Weights should be freely hanging at all times. Teach this important point to a UAP on the unit to other personnel such as those in the radiology department and visitors. Inspect the skin at, at least every eight hours for signs of irritation or inflammation. Whenever possible, remove the belt or boot that is used for skin traction every eight hours to inspect under the device. Check traction equipment frequently to ensure its proper functioning. Inspect all ropes, knots, and pulleys uh, at least every eight to twelve hours for loosening, fraying, or positioning and positioning. Check the weight for consistency with the healthcare provider's prescription. Sometimes one of the weights is accidentally removed by a staff member or a visitor who bumps into it. Replace the weights if they are not correct and notify the healthcare provider or orthopedic technician. If the patient reports severe pain from muscle spasm, the weights may be too heavy or the patient may need realignment. Report the pain to the healthcare provider if body realignment fails to reduce the discomfort. Uh, assess neurovascular status of the affected body part to detect circulatory compromise and tissue damage. The circulation is usually monitored every hour for the first 24 hours after traction is applied uh, and every four hours thereafter. And collects examination challenge. A client is transferred from the operating suite with an external fixator fixator for a compound tibial fracture that has been debrided. What is he is receiving IV antibiotic th biotic therapy and morphine by a PCA pump. Which nursing action is the most important for this client? Monitoring for signs of inflammation and, and infection, performing frequent neurovascular assessments, teaching the client how to do leg exercises, keeping the affected leg elevated on a pillow. I don't know. It's either B or D, I think. Or A. Or A. I don't know. It'll tell us in a minute. Surgical management. For some types of fractures, closed reduction is not appropriate or sufficient. Surgical uh, intervention may be needed to realign the bone for the healing process. Preoperative care. For stable for stabilizing the fracture, the patient may be placed in traction before surgery. This procedure is typical for managing a fractured hip when Buck's traction is used. Okay. Uh, see figure 54.5. Teach the patient and family what to expect during and after the surgery. The preoperative 
uh, care for a patient undergoing musculoskeletal surgery is similar to that for anyone having surgery with general or epidural anesthesia. See Chapter 16 for a thorough discussion of preoperative nursing care. Operative procedures. Op open reduction with internal fixation or ORIF is uh, one of the most common methods uh, of reducing and immobilizing a fracture. External fixation with closed reduction is used when patients have soft tissue injury or open fracture. Uh, although nurses do not decide which surgical technique is used, understanding the procedures enhances patient teaching and care. Because uh, ORIF, open reduction with internal fixation, uh, permits early mobilization, it is often the preferred surgical method for an older adult who is susceptible to the complications of uh, immobility. Open reduction allows the surgeon to directly view the fracture site. Internal fixation um, uses metal pins, screws, rods, plates, or prosthesis to immobilize the fracture during healing. The uh, surgeon makes an incision to gain access to the broken bone and implants one or more devices into the bone tissue. After the bone uh, achieves union, the metal hardware may be removed, depending on the location and type of fracture. Hardware is removed most frequently in ankle fractures, depending on the severity of the injury. Specific types of internal fixation devices are discussed in later in the fractures of specific sites section. Table 52, types of traction used for musculoskeletal trauma. Uh, type of characteristics of traction. Upper extremity traction, side arm, skin, or skeletal traction. The forearm is flexed and extended 90 degrees from the upper part of the body. Fractures of the humerus with or without involvement of the shoulder and clavicle. Overhead or 90-90 traction, the skin or skeletal, the elbow is flexed and the arm is at a right angle to the elbow. I, you know, I'm going to skip this whole thing because it's just, I don't even understand it and go through it. <laughs> An alternative modality for the management of fractures is the external fixation apparatus as shown in figure 54-6. External fixation is a system in which pins or wires are inserted through the skin and affected bone and then connected to a rigid external frame. The system may be used for upper or lower extremity fractures or for fractures of the pelvis. After a fixator is removed, the patient may be placed in a cast until healing is complete. External fixation has several advantages over other surgical techniques. There is minimal blood loss in comparison with internal fixation. The device allows early ambulation and exercise of the affected body while relieving pain. The device maintains alignment in closed fractures that will not maintain position in a cast and stabilizes comminuted f fractures that require bone grafting. In open fractures in which skin and tissue trauma accompany the fracture, the device permits easy access to the wound while the bone heals. This method is often preferred over the use of a window in a case in a cast for wound care. And a disadvantage of the external fixation is an increased risk for pin site infection. Pin site infections can lead to osteomyelitis, which is serious and difficult to treat. Uh, Post-operative care for patients with an external fixator. Pay particular attention to pay particular attention to the sites for signs of inflammation uh, or infection. In the first 48 to 72 hours, clear fluid draining or weeping is expected. Although no standardized method or evidence-based protocol for pin care has been established, recommendations have been made based on the evidence base regarding pin site care. See the evidence-based practice box below. Because the pins go through the skin and into the bone, the risk for infection is high. Monitor the pin sites at, at least every 8 to 12 hours for drainage, color, odor, and severe redness. 
which indicate inflammation and possible infection. Follow agency policy for how to clean the pin sites and ensure that it follows the evidence-based guidelines for the National Association of Orthopedic Nurses. The patient with an external fixator may have a disturbed body image. The frame may be large and bulky, and the affected area may have massive tissue damage and dressings. Be sensitive to this possibility in planning care. Teach uh, about alternatives to clothing that may be required to fixate the place. The Ilizarov technique or of circular external fixation is sometimes used to treat new fractures. Close comminuted fractures and open fractures with bone loss. As well as uh, malunion or nonunion of fractures. It may also be used to treat congenital bone deformities, especially in children. The circular exter external fixation devices, uh, devices used to gently pull apart the cortex of the bone and stimulate new bone growth. Unlike the traditional fixator, the, uh, Eliz the Elizrov, Elizarov external fixator promotes rotation, angulation, lengthening, or widening of bone to correct bony defects and allows for healing of any soft tissue defect. The nurse, nursing care associated with this device is similar to the care of the patient with other external fixation systems, with one major exception. If the device is being used for filling bone gaps using bone transport or uh, distraction, uh, teach the patient how to manually turn the four-sided nuts, uh, also called clickers, up to four, uh, up to four times a day. Daily distraction rates uh, vary, but one millimeter daily is common. Screening and teaching are particularly important because the patient adjusts and cares for the apparatus over a long period of up to six months to a year. Pain control is a prior priority outcome for patients using this device. The post-operative care for a patient undergoing uh, ORIF um, or, or external fixation is um, or external fixation is similar to that provided for any patient undergoing surgery. Because bone is a vascular dynamic body tissue, the patient is at risk for complications specific to fractures and musculoskeletal surgery. Interventions for preventing and detecting these pro problems, e.g. fat embolism, veno uh, venous thromboembolism, were discussed on page 1180 in the complications of fracture section. Additional information about post-operative care is found beginning on page 1195 in the fractures of specific sites section. Procedures for non-union. Some management techniques are not successful because the bone does not heal. Several uh, additional options are, are available to the physician to promote bone union, such as electrical bone stimulation, bone graphing, and ultrasound fracture treatment. For selected patients, electrical bone stimulation may be successful. Uh, this procedure is based on research showing that the bone has electrical properties that are used in healing. The exact me mechanism of action is unknown. Several types of devices have been developed. A non-invasive electrical bone stimulation system uses magnetic coils applied on the skin or over a cast to deliver a pulsed magnetic field. There are no known risks with this system, although patients with pacemakers cannot use this device on an arm. Implanted direct current stimulators are placed directly in the fracture site and have no external apparatus. Both systems require about six months of treatment, and weight bearing is at the discretion of the care healthcare provider. Another uh, method of treating non union is bone grafting. A bone graft may also replace diseased bone or increased bone tissue uh, for joint replacement. In most cases, chips of bone are taken from the iliac crest or other site and are packed or wired between the bone ends to facilitate union. Allografts from cadavers may also be used. These grafts are frozen or, or freeze-dried and stored under sterile conditions in a bone bank. Bone banking from living donors is becoming increasingly popular. If qualified 
uh, patients undergoing total hip replacement may donate their femoral heads to the bank for later use as bone grafts for others. Careful screening ensures that the bone is healthy and that the doctor has no communicable disease, or the donor has no communicable disease. The bone cannot be donated without written cons consent. One of the newest modalities for fracture healing is low-intensity pulsed ultrasound or exogen therapy um, used for slow healing fractures or fractures as an alternative to surgery. Ultrasound treatment has had excellent results. The applies the treatment for about 20 minutes each day. Acute pain, planning, expected outcomes. Patient with a fracture is expected to take personal action to control pain. Indicators include that he will or she will consistently demonstrate the ability to use preventative measures, use non-analgesic uh, relief measures, use analgesic relief measures appropriately, uh, report changes in pain sy symptoms or sites to healthcare professional, report uncontrollable pain symptoms to healthcare professional, report that pain is controlled. Interventions. The non-surgical or surgical management of fractures through reduction and immobilization helps reduce pain and prevents neurovascular injury. However, the patient often requires drug therapy and other pain relief measures. Drug therapy, musculoskeletal pain related to soft tissue damage, bone disruption, muscle spasm, and peripheral nerve damage is one of the most se severe types of pain that can be experienced. The patient often has the pain for a prolonged time which makes pain management difficult. The healthcare provider commonly prescribes opioid and non-opioid analgesics, anti-inflammatory drugs, and muscle relaxants. For patients with chronic severe pain, opioid and non-opioid drugs are alternated or given together to manage pain both centrally in the brain and peripherally at the site of injury. For severe or multiple fractures, patient-controlled analgesia, PCA with morphine, or uh, meperidine or demerol or other drugs is used. Meperidine should never be used for older adults because it has toxic metabolites that can cause seizures and other complications. Um, many hospitals no longer use this drug for patients of any age. Demerol? Really? For patients who have less severe injury, the analgesic may be given on an as-needed basis. The nurse and patient mutually decide on the best times for the strong pain uh, for the strong pain relievers to be given, e.g. before a complex stressing change, <sighs> before physical therapy, and at bedtime. Assess the effectiveness of the analgesic and its side effects. Constipation is a common side effect of opioid therapy, especially for older adults. Assess for frequency of bowel movements and administer stool softeners as requested by the healthcare provider. Encourage fluids and activity as tolerated. Uh, chapter 5 discusses the various methods of pain management, including epidural analgesia and uh, patient controlled analgesia. Complementary and alternative therapies. With chronic severe pain, the patient cannot depend solely on drugs for relief. Recommend therapy or recommend temporary pain relief measures such as ice or, or heat depending on the cause of the pain. If swelling causes pressure on the affected area, ice and elevation of the uh, affected body part may be appropriate. Teach the patient to plan activities that allow for rest and quiet periods. Um, some patients like soft music playing while resting. Music spasms or muscle spasms are best relieved by application of heat and massage. Other physical measures include a warm, soothing bath, a back rub, and the use of therapeutic touch. If these measures are not effective in reducing pain, distraction, imagery, or music therapy may be used as an alternative. 
teach the patient relaxation techniques such as deep breathing for using periods for use during periods of severe pain. Chapters two and five discuss the techniques in detail. Risk for infection. Planning expected outcomes. The patient with a fracture is expected to be free of a wound or bone infection. Indicators include that the patient will not have foul smelling discharge, purulent drainage, fever, lethargy, wound site culture colonization if wound present, white blood cell elevation if systemic infection. Interventions. Interventions. When caring for a patient with an open fracture, use clean or aseptic technique for dressing changes in wound irrigations. Check agency policy for specific protocols. Immediately notify the health care provider if you observe inflammation and purulent drainage. Other infections such as pneumonia and urinary tract infection may occur days after the fracture. Monitor the patient's vital signs every four to eight hours because increases in temperature and pulse often indicate systemic infection. Older adults may not have a temperature elevation even in the presence of severe infection. Oh my god, the same crap over and over again. Most important, uh, for most patients, oh yeah, not most important, but for most patients with an open fracture, the healthcare provider prescribes one or more broad spectrum antibiotics prophylactically and performs surgical wound debridement. as soon as possible after the injury. First generation cephalosporins, clindamycin or cleosin, and ciprofloxin or cipro are commonly used. In addition to systemic antibiotics, local antibiotic ther therapy through wound irrigation is commonly prescribed, especially during debridement. Antibiotic beads, uh, e.g. topramycin or nepsin, uh, mixed with bone cement can be used during surgery. A newer wound therapy is the vacuum assisted closure or VAC system as a method of increasing the rate of wound healing for open fractures. This device allows quicker wound closure which decreases the risk for infection. When the bone is surgically repaired hardware and or bone grafts have typically been implanted however they are limited to in their in their use. The United the U.S. Food and Drug Administration (FDA) approved the use of recombinant human bone morphogenetic protein 2, or RHBMP2, for tibial and spinal fractures. The evidence suggests that this implanted, genetically engineered substance increases wound healing, decreases hardware failure, and decreases the risk for infection. Impaired physical mobility. Planning expected outcomes. The patient with a fracture is uh, expected to be free uh, of complications associated with impaired mobility. Indicators include that the patient will not have pressure ulcers, constipation, urinary retention, contracted joints, and pneumonia, and also uh, veno th venous thromboembolism. The patient is also expected to move purposely in his or her own environment and independently with or without an ambulatory device. Indicators include that the patient will have balance, coordination, muscle movement, transferability, ambulation ability, with or without ambulatory aids. Interventions. The interventions necessary for this diagnosis can be grouped into two types. Those that help prevent complications of impaired mobility and those that help increase mobility. Prevention of complications. The nurse plays a vital role in preventing and assessing for complications in immobilized patients with fractures. Additional information about nursing care for preventing problems associated with immobility is found in Chapter 8. Promotion of mobility. Promotion of mobility. The, the use of crutches or a walker increases mobility and assists in ambulation. The patient may progress to, u to use of a cane. Crutches are the most commonly used ambulatory aid for many types of musculoskeletal trauma, e.g. fractures, sprains, amputations. In most agencies, the physical therapist fits the patient for crutches 
and teaches him or her how to ambulate with them on flat surfaces and stairs. Reinforce the instructions and evaluate whether the patient is using the crutches correctly. In emergency uh, de department uh, and ambulatory settings, nurses routinely teach how to use crutches. Walking with crutches requires strong arm muscles, balance, and coordination. For this reason, crutches are not often used for older adults. Walkers and canes are preferred. The therapist pads the tips and uh, axillary bars of the crutches. Padding prevents the tips from slipping and the bars from dangling, uh, damaging the axilla. To uh, prevent pressure on the axillary nerve, there should be two to three finger breadths between the axilla and the top of the crutch when the crutch tip is at least six inches or 15 centimeters diagonally in front of the foot. Okay, the crutch is adjusted so that the elbow is flexed no more than 30 degrees when the palm is on the handle. There are several types of gates for walking with crutches. The most common one for musculoskeletal injury is three-point gait, which allows little weight bearing on the affected le leg. The procedure for these gates is discussed in Fundamentals of Nursing books. Okay. A walker is most often used by the older patient who needs additional support for balance. The physical therapist assesses the strength of the upper extremities and the unaffected leg. Strength is improved with exercise as needed. A cane is something used uh, if the patient needs only minimal support for an affected leg. The straight cane offers the least support. A hemi cane or a quad cane provides a broader base for the for the cane and therefore more support. The cane is placed on the unaffected side and should create no more than 30 degrees of flexion of the elbow. The top of the cane should be parallel to the great trochanter of the femur or stylus of the wrist. Chapter 8 describes these ambulatory devices in more detail. Balanced nutrition, less than body requirements. The patient with a fracture is expected to maintain an adequate dietary intake to meet me metabolic needs. Indicators include that the patient will have normal nutrient intake, fluid intake, serum prealbumin, and uh, hematocrit and hemoglobin. Uh, interventions collaborate with the nutritionist to assess the patient's food likes and dislikes and plan meals that are both appealing and nutritional. For promotion of bone and tissue healing, the patient needs a high protein, high calorie diet. Supplements of vitamins B and C are also required for tissue nutrition. Some patients are immobilized for extended periods. Thus, they are uh, predisposed to hypocalcemia which results in loss of calcium from bone and bone fragility. Teach the patient and family to increase the intake of foods high in calcium, particularly milk and milk products if tolerated. For those who cannot tolerate dairy products or are vegan, calcium fortified and vitamin D fortified soy or rice milk and tofu products are, uh, may be used. Negative nitrogen balance can develop seven to 10 days after injury in an immobilized patient because of an increase in catabolism without um, adequate protein intake. Su suggest frequent small feedings um, and supplements of pro uh, high protein nutritional drinks. Milkshakes are an excellent protein and calorie supplement as well as a source of calcium. If the uh, patient is vegan is lactose intolerant or has di dairy allergies, collaborate with the nutritionist about non-dairy sources of protein. 
For patients who have uh, lower extremity fractures, less weight bearing on long bones can cause anemia. Less weight bearing on long bones can cause anemia. Lower extremity fractures. The red bone marrow needs weight bearing to stimulate red blood cell production. Blood loss from the injury or surgery contributes to the anemia. Encourage intake of foods high in iron content. Uh, the healthcare provider may prescribe a daily multivitamin with iron supplement. Encourage the patient to take these supplements with food to decrease possible nausea. Community-based care. The patient with an uncomplicated fracture is uh, usually discharged to home from the uh, emergency department or urgent care center. Older adults with hip or other fractures or patients with multiple traumas are hospitalized and then transferred to home, a rehabilitation setting, or a long-term care facility for rehabilitation. Collaborate with the case manager or the discharge planner in the hospital to ensure uh, c continuity of care. Be sure to communicate uh, the plan of care to the health care agency receiving the patient. Home care management. If the patient is discharged to home, the nurse therapist or case manager, CM, assesses the home environment for structural barriers to mobility, such as stairs. Be sure that the patient has access to the bathroom, ask about scatter rugs, waxed floors, and walkway areas that could increase the risk for falls. If the patient needs to use a wheelchair or ambulatory aid, make sure that he or she can use it safely and that there is room in the house to ambulate with these devices. The physical therapist teaches how to use stairs, but older adults may experience difficulty performing this task. A home health care nurse may make one or two visits to check that the home is safe and that the patient and family are able to follow the interdisciplinary plan of care. Health teaching. The patient with a fracture may be discharged from the hospital, emergency department, office or clinic with a bandage, splint, cast, or external fixator. <sighs> Provide verbal and written in instructions on the care of these devices. Chart 54.6 describes care of the affected extremity uh, after removal of the cast. The patient may also need to continue wound care at home. Instruct the patient and family how, about how to assess and dress the wound to promote uh, healing and prevent infection. Teach them how to recognize complications. See the complications of fractures section page one, uh, 1180 and when and where to seek professional health care to if complications occur. Additional educational uh, uh, needs depend on the type of fracture and fracture repair. Health care resources. In collaboration with the case manager, arrange for the follow-up care at home. For example, professional counseling for depression may need to continue after discharge from the hospital. A social worker may need to help pati the patient apply for funds to pay medical bills. If there is severe bone and tissue damage, be realistic and help the patient and family understand the long-term nature of the recovery period. Multiple treatment and techniques and surgical procedures required for complications can be mentally and emotionally draining for the patient and family. A vocational counselor may be needed to help the patient find a different type of job depending on the extent of the fracture. An older or un incapacitated patient may need assistance with ADLs which can be provided by home care aides if family or other caregiver is not available. In collaboration with the case manager, anticipate the patient's needs and arrange for these services. Chart 54-6, Patient and Family Education Guide care of the extremity after cast removal. Uh, remove scaly dead skin carefully by soaking. Do not scrub. Mo remove the extremity carefully. Expect discomfort, weakness, and decreased range of motion. Support the extremity with pillows or your ortho orthotic device until strength and movement return. Exercise slowly as instructed by your uh, physical therapist. Wear support stockings or elastic bandages to prevent swelling for lower extremity. Uh, evaluation <coughs> evaluation outcomes. Evaluate the care of the patient with one or more fractures based on the identified nursing diagnosis and collaborative problems 
The expected outcomes include that the patient has adequate blood flow through the small vessels to maintain tissue perfusion, takes personal actions to control pain, is free of infection, is free of physiological consequences of impaired mobility, moves purposefully and independently in his or her own environment with or without an assisted device, meets nutritional needs uh, for healing. Specific indicators for these outcomes are listed for each nursing diagnosis in the planning and implementation section see earlier. Fractures of specific sites, upper extremity fractures. In addition to the general care discussed in the previous section, management of extremity fractures includes specific interventions related to the location and nature of the injury. Unless multiple fractures or massive soft tissue damage occurs, upper extremity fractures do not usually require hospitalization. However, they uh, often take many uh, months to heal. In some cases, patients may not regain complete function for up to a year, even after extensive rehabilitation and occupational therapy. Assess neurovascular status in the affected arm and hand before and after fracture treatment. Monitor for numbness and tingling distal to below the injury, uh, which may indicate peripheral nerve damage. Fractures of the clavicle typically result from a fall on uh, an outstretched hand, uh, a fall on the shoulder, or a uh, direct blow to the upper chest and, and shoulder area. Most clavicular, uh, clavicular, uh, clavicular fractures are self-healing. A splint or bandage is used for immobilization. Complicated open fractures, uh, although uncommon, may require open reduction with internal fixation by pins, wires, or screws. Scapular um, fractures are not common and are usually caused by direct impact to the area. Serious internal trauma including pneumothorax, pulmonary contusion, and uh, fractured ribs can accompany these fractures. The shoulder is kept in position with a commercial immobilizer until the fracture heals, usually in two to four weeks. Intraarticular neck and gl glenoid uh, fractures may require surgical intervention with plate and screw fixation. Fractures of the proximal humerus uh, particularly impacted or displaced fractures are common in the older adult. As persons age, fractures of the humerus occur more frequently in the uh, area closer to the shoulder joint. This makes treatment more difficult in the older adult. An impacted uh, injury is usually treated with a sling or other device for immobilization. A displaced fracture often requires ORF with pins or, or a prosthesis. Hum hum Humeral shift fractures are generally corrected by closed reduction and a hanging arm cast or splint. If necessary, the fracture is repaired surgically with an in intramedullary rod or, or uh, metal plate and screws uh, or with external fixation. Non-union of the bone and radial nerve palsy are frequent uh, complications of this fracture. Bone grafting helps promote uh, union. Prolonged splinting is necessary while the radical nerve regenerates. A direct blow to the condyles of the distal humerus uh, can cause either or both condyles to fracture, usually in a T or Y-shaped fracture. Uh, the uh, most serious complication is a damage to the brachial or medi median nerve. Condylar fracture is usually treated by ORIF uh, with a series, series of screws, uh, although skeletal traction and casting can be used. Fractures of the elbow or olecranon, uh, olecranon are uh, common in adults and uh, typically result from a fall on the elbow. Many are successfully treated by close reduction in application of a cast or if it's performed by, for displaced fractures and a splint is worn uh, during the healing phase. Forearm fractures uh, of the ulna uh, without accompanying injury to the radius are rare as with other fractures of long bones. Close reduction with cast uh, may be the appropriate um, treatment if the fracture is displaced or if with intramedullary rods or plates and uh, screws is required. One or more of the bones in the wrist and hand can break, but the most common fracture is the carpal scaphoid bone in the young adult men. This is also one of the most misdiagnosed fractures because it is poorly visualized on an x-ray film. Closed reduction and casting for 6 to 12 weeks is the treatment of choice if the bone does not heal or if with bone grafting is performed. A colus wrist fracture is common in older adults, particularly women with osteoporosis. 
A colis fracture or wrist fracture is common in older adults, particularly women with osteoporosis. A colis fracture occurs in the last inch of the distal radius and often it is the result of a fall on an outstretched hand. These fractures can usually be treated by splinting or casting for six to eight weeks. Fractures of the metacarpals and phalanges or fingers are usually not displaced, which makes uh, their treatment less difficult than that of other fractures. Metacarpal fractures are immobilized for three to four weeks. Phalangeal um, fractures are immobilized in fingers splints for 10 to 14 days. Lower extremity fractures, fractures of the hip. Hip fractures is the most common injury in older adults and one of the most frequently seen injuries in any healthcare setting or community. It has a high mortality rate as a result of multiple complications related to surgery and prolonged immobility. Osteoporosis is the biggest risk factor for hip fractures. This disease weakens, uh, weakens the upper femur hip uh, breaks and then causes the person to fall. The number of people with hip fractures is expected to uh, continue to increase as the population ages and the associated health care costs will be tremendous. Considerations for older adults. Teach older adults about the risk factors for hip fractures, including physiologic aging uh, changes, disease processes, drug therapy, and environmental hazards. Physiologic changes include sensory changes such as visual acuity, diminished hearing, changes in gait, balance, and muscle strength, and joint stiffness. Disease processes like osteoporosis, foot disorders, and changes in cardiac function increase the risk for hip fracture. Drugs such as diuretics, antihypertensives, antidepressants, sedatives, opioids, and alcohol are factors that increase the risk for falling in older adults. Use of three or more drugs at the same time drastically increases the risk for falls. Throw rugs, uh, loose carpeting, in inadequate lighting, uneven walking surfaces or steps and pets are environmental hazards that also cause falls. The older adult with hip fracture uh, usually um, reports groin pain or pain behind the knee on the affected side. In some cases, the patient has pain in the lower back or has no pain at all. However, the patient is not able to uh, stand x-ray or other imaging assessment con uh, confirms the diagnosis. Uh, hip fractures include uh, those involving the upper third of the femur and are classified uh, as uh, intracapsular or within the joint capsule or extracapsular outside the joint capsule. These uh, types are further divided according to fracture location in the area of the femoral neck. There is concern with disruption of the blood supply to the head of the femur, which can result in ischemic or avascular necrosis, AVN, uh, of the femoral head. Uh, AVN causes death and necrosis of bone tissue and results in uh, pain and decreased mobility. This problem is most likely in patients with displaced fractures. Prompt surgical repair can prevent this complication and decrease pain. The treatment of choice is surgical repair when uh, possible to allow older patients to be out of bed and ambulatory. Bux traction may be applied before surgery to help decrease pain associated with muscle spasm. Depending on the exact location of the fracture, open reduction and in, in internal fixation ORF may include an intermedullary rod, pins, prosthesis for femoral head or neck fractures or a compression screw. Uh, Epidural or general anesthesia is used. Uh, figure 54.9, 54.10 illustrate examples of these devices. Occasionally, a patient excuse me, uh, will be so debilitated that surgery cannot be done. In these cases, non-surgical options are Bucks traction, pain management, and bed rest to allow natural fracture healing. Patients usually receive PCA, morphine, or other opioid or epidural analgesia after uh, surgery. Ch chapter 5 discusses the nursing care associated with these pain management modalities in detail. The patient begins ambulating with assistance the day after surgery to prevent complications associated with uh, immobility, e.g. pressure ulcers, atelitasis, or uh, venous thromb thromboembolism. Uh, early movement and ambulation also decrease the chance of infection and increase surgical site healing. Patients who have an ORF are at risk for hip dislocation or subluxa sublux subluxation. Be sure to prevent hip abduction and rotation to keep the operative leg in proper alignment. Re regular pillows or abduction devices can be used. For
for patients who are confused or restless. If straps are used to hold the device in place, check the skin for signs of pressure. Perform neurovascular assessments to ensure the device is not interfering with arterial circulation or peripheral nerve conduction. Special considerations for the patient having a hip repair also include careful inspection of skin, including areas of pressure, especially the heels. Use of Bucks traction in uh, periods of bed rest before surgical intervention can increase the risk for pressure injury in this area within 24 hours. Be sure that the patient's heels are up off the bed at all times. Inspect the heels and other high-risk bony prominences areas every 8 to 12 hours. Delegate turning and repositioning every 1 to 2 hours to UAP and supervise this nursing activity. Other measures to decrease uh, the risk for pressure ulcers are described elsewhere in this text and in fundamental textbooks. Other nursing and interdisciplinary care is similar to uh, that described for fracture and other sites. Specific interventions are similar to those in total hip replacement. Uh, many patients recover fully from hip fracture uh, repair and re regain their functional ability. However, some patients are not able to return to their pre-fracture ADLs and mobility level. This, uh, these patients usually do not return to their homes and are placed in long-term care facilities. Conducted, uh, uh, Folden and Tappan conducted a small descriptive study that identified predictors for patients who are likely to fully recover. Uh, they found that balance and cog cognitive ability were the best predictors. Other fractures of the lower extremity. Other fractures of the lower extremity may uh, or may not require hospitalization. However, if the patient has severe or multiple fractures, especially with soft tissue damage, hospital admission is usually required. Patients who have uh, surgery to repair their injury may also be hospitalized, coordinate care with the physical therapist regarding mobility transfers, positioning, and ambulation, collaborate with the case manager regarding placement after discharge. Most patients go home unless there is no support system or additional rehabilitation is needed. Health teaching and ensuring continuity of care are essential. Fractures of the lower two-thirds of the femur usually uh, result from trauma, often from a motor vehicle crash. A femur um, fracture is seldom Im immobilized by casting because the powerful muscles of the thigh become spastic, which causes displacement of bone ends. Extensive hemorrhage can occur with femur fracture. Uh, surgical uh, treatment is ORF with nails, rods, or a compression screw in a few cases in which uh, extensive bone fragmentation or severe tissue trauma is found, external fixation may be employed. Healing time for a femur fracture may uh, be six months or longer. Skeletal traction followed by a full-length brace or cast may be used in non-surgical treatment. Like most other uh, <coughs> fractures, patellar and kneecap fractures result from direct impact. The surgery typically repairs the fracture by closed reduction and casting of internal uh, fixation with screws. A knee immobilizer is used so that the fracture can heal properly. Uh, trauma to the lower leg uh, most often causes fractures of both the tibia and the fibula. Um, particularly the lower third and is often referred to as a tib-fib fracture. The major, major treatment uh, techniques are closed reduction with casting, internal fixation, and external fixation. If closed reduction is used, the uh, patient wears a cast for at least 8 to, 12, or eight to 10 weeks. Um, because of poor blood supply to parts of the tibia and fibula, de delayed union is not unusual with this type of fracture. Internal fixation with nails or plates and screws, followed by a long leg uh, cast for four to six weeks, is another option. When the fractures cause extensive skin and soft tissue damage, the initial treatment may be external fixation, often uh, for six to ten weeks, usually followed by application of a cast until the fracture is completely healed. The patient uses ambulatory aids, us uh, usually crutches. Uh, ankle fractures are uh, described by their anatomic place of injury. For example, uh, bimalleolar or POTS fracture involves the medial malleus of the tibia and the lateral malleus of the fibula. Uh, because of the instability of the ankle joint, the fracture can result from supination and uh, supination and aversion, pronation and abduction, or pronation and aversion. These forces generally create spinal. Uh, or spiral traverse or oblique breaks which are often difficult to treat and present problems in healing. A combination of closed and open techniques may be used depending on the severity and extent of the fracture and uh, arthrodesis fusion may be needed if the bone does not heal. Treatment of fractures of the foot or phalanges toes is similar to that of other fractures with either closed or open reduction. Uh, phalangeal fractures are more painful than, uh, than are more painful than what? but not as serious as uh, most other types of fractures. Uh, crutches are used for ambulation.
Fractures of the chest and pelvis. Chest trauma may cause fractures of the ribs or sternum. The most commonly fractured ribs are numbers 4 through 8. The ma major concern with rib and sternal fractures is the potential for puncture of the lungs, heart, or arteries, or bone fragments or, en or ends. Assess airway, breathing, and circulation status first uh, for any p uh, patient having chest trauma. Fractures of the lower ribs may damage underlying organs such as the liver, spleen, or kidneys. These fractures tend to heal on their own without surgical intervention. Patients are often uncomfortable during the healing process and require analgesia. Uh, they also have a high risk of pneumonia because of shallow breathing caused by pain or inspiration. Encourage them to breathe normally if possible. Because the pelvis is very vascular and is close to major organs, the blood vessels associated with internal damage is the major uh, focus in fracture management. After head injuries, pelvic fractures are the second most common uh, cause of death from trauma. In young adults, pelvic fractures typically result from motor vehicle crashes or uh, falls from uh, buildings. Falls are the most <laughs> common cause in older adults. The most, uh, the major uh, concern related to pelvic injury is venous oozing or arterial bleeding. Loss of blood volume leads to hypovolemic shock. Assess for internal abdominal trauma for ch uh, by checking for blood in the urine and stool and by monitoring the abdomen for the development of rigidity or swelling. The trauma team may use peritoneal lavage, CT, uh, or ultrasound uh, for assessment of hemorrhage. Ultrasound is non-invasive, rapid, reliable, and cost-effective and can be done at the bedside. There are many class classification systems for pe pelvic fractures. A system that is particularly useful divides fractures of the pelvis into two broad categories, non-weight-bearing fractures and weight-bearing fractures. When a non-weight-bearing part of the pelvis is fractured, such as one of the pubic rami or the iliac crest, uh, treatment can be as minimal as bed rest on a firm mattress or bed board. This type of fracture can be quite painful and the patient may need to, uh, stool softeners to facilitate bowel movements because of the hesitancy to move. Well-stabilized fractures usually heal in two months. A weight-bearing fracture, such as a multiple fracture of the pelvic ring associated with instability or a fractured uh, a set of bellum, uh, necessitates uh, external fixation or open reduction uh, with internal fixation or if or both. Um, progression to weight bearing depends on the stability of the fracture after fixation. Some patients can fully bear weight within days of surgery whereas others managed with traction may not be able to bear weight for as long as 12 weeks. Okay, compression fractures of the spine. Uh, most ver vertebral fractures are associated with osteoporosis, metastatic bone cancer, and multiple myeloma. Uh, compression fractures result from uh, trabecular or cancerous bone within the vertebra, uh, becomes weakened and causes the vertebral body to collapse. The patient has severe pain, deformity, kyphosis, and uh, occasional neurologic compromise. As discussed in the osteoporosis section of Chapter 53, the patient's quality of life is reduced by the impact of this problem. Non-surgical management includes bed rest, analgesics, nerve blocks, and uh, physical therapy to maintain muscle strength, vertebral compression fractures, VCS, that may uh, remain painful and impair mobility may be surgically treated with uh, vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty. These uh, procedures are minimally invasive techniques in which bone cement is injected through the skin percutaneously directly into the fracture site to provide stability and immediate pain relief. Kyphoplasty includes the additional step of inserting a small balloon into the fracture site and inflating it to contain the cement and to restore height to the vertebral vertebra. This uh, procedure is preferred because it reduces the com com complication of leaking of bone cement outside the vertebral body and may restore height to uh, decrease kyphosis. Minimally, invasive surgeries can be done in an operating or interventional radiology suite by a surgeon or interventional radiologist. They may be done uh, with moderate sedation or general anesthesia. IV uh, ketorolac or toradol um, may be given before the procedure to reduce inflammation uh, at the injection site. Large bone or large bore needles are placed into the fracture site using fluoroscopy or uh, uh, CT guidance. Then the uh, deflated balloon is inserted through the needles and inflated in the fracture site and the cement is injected. Okay, nursing care of patients having vertoplasty or kyphoplasty uh, provide perioperative care, peri preoperative care, including check the patient's coagulation, laboratory tests, platelet count should be more than ten, uh, or 100,000. Make sure that all anticoagulant drugs are discontinued as 
uh, requested by a physician, assess the document and document the patient's neurologic status, uh, especially extremity movement and sensation, assess the patient's pain level, assess the uh, patient's ability to lie prone for at least one hour, establish an IV line, and take vitals, provide post-operative care, including place the patient in a flat supine position for one to two hours, or as requested by the physician, monitor and record vital signs and frequent neurologic assessments, Report any uh, change immediately to the physician. Apply an ice pack to the puncture site if needed to relieve pain. Assess the patient's pain level and compare it with the preoperative uh, level. Give mild analgesic as needed. Monitor, monitor for complications such as bleeding at the puncture site or shortness of breath. Report these findings immediately if they occur. Assist the patient with ambulation before discharge. Teach the patient and family to avoid driving or operating machinery for the first 24 hours because drugs uh, used during the procedure. Uh, monitor the puncture site for signs of infection such as redness, pain, swelling, and drainage. Uh, keep the dressing dry and remove it the next day. Begin uh, usual activities including walking the next day. Slowly increase activity slow, uh, level over the next few days. Uh, okay. Then amputations. An amputation is the removal of a body part. Advanced advances in mi microvascular surgical procedures, better uh, use of antibiotic therapy, and improved surgical techniques for traumatic injury and bone cancer all uh, help reduce the numbers of amputations. The psychosocial aspects of the procedure are often more devastating than the physical impairments that result. The uh, loss is complete and permanent and causes a change in body image and often in self-esteem. Collaborate with members of the healthcare team, including uh, prost prostheticists, uh, rehabilitation therapists, psychologists, case managers, and uh, psych phy physi physiatrists, physiatrists, I don't know, rehabilitation physicians, uh, when um, providing care to the patient who has an amputation. Pathophysiology, types of amputation. Amputations may be elective or traumatic. Most are elective and are related to complications of peripheral vascular disease and arteriosclerosis. These uh, complications uh, result in ischemia in distal areas of the lower extremity. Diabetes and mellitus is often an underlying cause. Amputation is considered only after other interventions have not restored circulation to the lower extremity, uh, sometimes referred to as a, as limb salvage procedures, e.g. percutaneous uh, transluminal angioplasty or PTA. These procedures are discussed elsewhere in this text. Traumatic uh, amputations most often result from accidents and are primarily a uh, cause of upper extremity amputation and are the primary cause of upper extremity amputation. A person may be cleaning lawnmower blades or a snowblower without disconnecting the machine. A motor vehicle or industrial machine accident may also cause an amputation. Tra traumatic amputations also increase uh, during war as a result of mines and bombs, uh, e.g. Iraq, okay? uh, most often uh, uh, affecting one or both legs. Uh, thousands of veterans of war in the United States are amputees and have had to adjust to major changes in their lifestyles. Uh, injuries that cause severe crushing of tissues or significant blood vessel damage usually result in amputation to preserve function of the residual limb. The uh, ability to salvage limbs in injured related to trauma, however, is increasing. Some body parts that are severed can be reattached or replanted. Um, levels of amputation. Uh, lower extremity uh, LE amputations are uh, performed much more frequently than upper extremity amputations five times of five types of lower extremity amputations may be performed the loss of any or all the small toes presents a minor disability loss of the great toe is significant because it affects balance gait and push off ability during walking midfoot uh, amputation e.g. the list friend or the chop part amputation and the uh, SIME amputation are common procedures for peripheral vascular disease. In the SIME amputation, most of the foot is removed, but the ankle remains. The uh, adv advantage of this surgery over traditional amputations below the knee is that weight bearing can occur without the use of a prosthesis and uh, with reduced pain. An intense effort is made to preserve knee joints with below the knee amputation or BKA. BKA. When the cause of the amputation extends beyond the knee, above knee, or higher amputations are performed. Hip disarticulation or removal of the hip joint and hemi uh, pe pelvectomy, uh, removal of half the pelvis and the, with the leg, are more common in younger patients than in older ones who cannot easily handle the cumbersome prosthesis required for ambulation. The higher level of amputation. Uh, the more energy is required for mobility. These higher level procedures are typically done for cancer of the bone, osteomyelitis, or tra trauma. 
fewer than 10% of all amputations are upper extremity UE uh, amputations and amputation of any part of the upper extremity is generally more incapacitating than one of the leg. The arms and hands are necessary for ADLs such as feeding, bathing, dressing, and driving car. In the upper extremity much length is, uh, as possible is saved to maintain function. Early placement with a prosthetic device is vital for the patient with this type of uh, amputation. Cultural awareness. The incidence of lower extremity amputations is greater in black and Hispanic populations because the incidence of major diseases leading to amputations such as diabetes and arteriosclerosis is greater in these populations. Limited access to health care for these minority groups may also play a major role in limb loss. Uh, language barriers may also be an obstacle to seeking health care providers. Complications of amputation. The most common complications of elective or traumatic amputations are hemorrhage, infection, phantom limb pain, neuroma, flexion, contractions. When a person loses a part or all of an extremity, either by surgery or by trauma, major blood vessels are se severed, which causes bleeding. If the bleeding is uncontrolled, the patient is at risk for hypovolemic shock, shock and possibly death. As with any surgical procedure or trauma, infection can occur in the wound or the bone, uh, osteomyelitis. The older adult who is malnourished and confused is at the greatest risk because excreta may soil the wound or he or she may remove the dressing and pick at the incision. Preventing infection is a major emphasis uh, in hospital and other health care settings. In some cases, Medicare will not reimburse the acquired uh, infections. Uh, phantom limb pain is a um, frequent complication of amputation. Sensation is felt in the ampu in amputated part immediately after surgery and uh, usually diminished over time. When this sensation persists and is unpleasant or painful, it is referred to as phantom limb pain, PLP. PLP is uh, more common in patients who had chronic limb pain before surgery and rare in those who have traumatic amputations. The patient reports pain in the removed body part shortly after surgery, usually after an uh, AKA uh, the, pa the pain is often described as either an intense burning, crushing, or cramping. Some patients report the removed part is in a distorted, uncomfortable position. They experience numbness and tingling, referred to as phantom limb sensation, as well as pain. Others state that the most distal area of the r removed part feels as if it is retracted into the residual limb end. The, the most... Uh, for most patients, the pain is triggered by touching the residual limb or by temperature or barometric pressure changes, concurrent illness, um, fatigue, anxiety, or stress. Routine activities such as urination can trigger the pain. If pain is long-standing, especially if it existed before the amputation, any stimulus can cause it, including touching any part of the body. Neuroma. Neuroma, uh, <coughs> a sensitive tumor uh, consisting of damaged nerve cells, forms uh, most often in amputations of the upper extremity, but can uh, occur anywhere. The patient may or may not have pain. It is diagnosed by sonography and can be treated either surgically or non-surgically. Surgery to remove the neuroma may be performed, but it often regrows and is more painful than before the surgery. Non-surgical modalities include nerve blocks, e.g. with phenyl, uh, steroid injections, and cognitive therapies such as hypnosis. Flexion contractures of the hip or knee are seen in patients with amputations of the lower extremity. These uh, complications must be avoided so that the patient can ambulate with a prosthetic device. Proper positioning and with an active range of motion exercises help prevent this complication. Health promotion and maintenance. The typical patient undergoing elective amputation is a middle-aged or older man with diabetes and a lengthy history of smoking. Most likely has not cared for his feet properly, with his, uh, which has resulted in a non-healing infected foot ulcer uh, and uh, possibly gangrene. Therefore, adherence with the disease management plan may help prevent the need for later amputation. Lifestyle habits uh, like maintaining a healthy weight, regular exercise, and avoiding smoking can help prevent chronic disease like diabetes. The second largest group with a amputations are young men who have motorcycle or vehicular crashes or who are injured by industrial equipment or by combat or accidents in war. These men may either experience a traumatic amputation or undergo a surgical amputation uh, because of severe crushing injury the, and massive soft tissue damage. Teach young male adults the importance of taking safety precautions to prevent injury at work, to avoid speeding or driving while driving alcohol. An, an increased number of young men also tend to speed and drive while drinking, which endangers themselves and others around them. <coughs> Assessment. Assess neurovascular, stati neuro neurovascular status and the affected extremity uh, that will be amputated when the patient has peripheral vascular disease. Also check circulation and other body parts. Assess skin color, temperature, sensation, and pulses in both affected and unaffected extremities. Capillary refill can be uh, 
difficult and to determine in the older adult related to thickened and opaque nails. In this situation, skin blah, 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 observe the, and document any discoloration, skin edema, ulcerations, presence of necrosis, and hair distribution on the affected extremity before surgery. Psychosocial assessment, people react differently to the loss of a body part. Be aware that an amputation or, or of a portion of one finger, especially the thumb, can be traumatic to the patient. The, tr the thumb is needed for hand activities, therefore the loss must, be, must not be underestimated. Patients undergoing amputation face complete permanent loss. Uh, evaluate their psychological preparation for a planned amputation and expect them to go through the grieving process. Uh, adjustment to a traumatic, unexpected amputation is often more difficult than accepting a planned one. The... Uh, young patient may be bitter, hostile, and depressed. In addition to loss of body part, the patient may lose a job, the ability to participate in favorite acti recreational activities or social relationships if other people cannot uh, accept the body change. The patient has an altered self-concept. The physical alterations that result from an amputation affects body image and self-esteem. For example, uh, a patient may think that an intimate relationship with a partner is no longer possible. An older adult may feel a loss of independence. Assess the patient's feelings about himself or herself to identify areas in which he or she needs emotional support. Refer the patient to the certified hospital chaplain, other spiritual leader, or social worker if he or she is hospitalized. Counseling resources are also available in the community. Attempt to determine the patient's willingness and motivation to withstand prolonged rehabilitation after the amputation, asking questions about how he or she has dealt with previous life crises can provide clues. Adjustment to the amputation rehabilitation is less difficult if the parent, patient is willing to make needed changes. Okay, assess the families, coping abilities, strengths and weaknesses, cultural beliefs, blah, blah, blah. Diagnostic assessment. The surgeon determines which tests are performed to assess for viability of the limb based on blood flow. A number of non-invasive techniques are available for this evaluation. For complete accuracy, the healthcare provider does not rely on any single test. One procedure is measurement of uh, segmental limb blood pressure, which can also be used by the nurse at the bedside. In this test, an ankle brachial index, or ABI, is uh, calculated by dividing ankle systolic pressure by brachial systolic or brachial systolic pressure. A normal ABI is one or higher. <clears throat> blood flow in an extre extremity can be assessed by a non-invasive test including Doppler uh, US or laser Doppler flow flowmetry and uh, transcutaneous oxygen pressure TCPO2 the ultrasonography and laser Doppler measure the speed of the blood flow in the limb the TCPO2 measures oxygen pressure to indicate blood flow in the limb and has proved reliable for predicting healing interventions emergency care traumatic amputation uh, basically, if a person can call 911, assess the patient for airway breathing, examine the amputation site, and apply direct pressure with layers of dry gauze or other cloth using clean gloves if available. Many nurses carry gloves. First aid kits of this type of emergency. Elevate the extremity above the patient's heart to decrease the bleeding. Do not remove the dressing to prevent dislodging the clot. The fingers are the most likely uh, part to be amputated and replanted. The, recurrent, the current re recommendation for pre-hospital care is to wrap the completely severed finger in a dry sterile gauze if available or clean cloth. Put the finger in a watertight sealed plastic bag. Place the bag in ice water, never directly on ice. Uh, one part ice and three parts water. Avoid contact between the um, uh, finger and the water to prevent tissue damage. Uh, do not remove any uh, semi-detached parts of the digit. Uh, be sure that the part goes with the uh, patient to the hospital. Patients undergoing amputation today are not confined to a wheelchair. Advancements in the design of prosthetics uh, have enabled blah 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 great uh, prosthetics. Let's see. Assessment of tissue perfusion. Uh, the nurse's primary focus is to monitor for signs indicating that there is sufficient tissue perfusion but no hemorrhage. The skin flap at the end of the residual limb should be pink in a light-skinned person and not discolored, lighter, or darker than other skin pigmentation in a dark-skinned pa patient. The uh, area should be warm but not hot. Assess the cl uh, closest proximal pulse for strength and compare it with that in the other extremity. If the patient has bilateral vascular disease, however, comparison of limbs is not an accurate way of measuring blood flow. Uh, management of pain. If the patient reports p uh, phantom limb pain, recognize that the pain is real and should be managed promptly and completely. It is not therapeutic to remind the patient that the limb cannot be hurting because it is missing. To prevent increased pain, handle the residual limb carefully when assessing the site or changing uh, dressing. Uh, mostly use opioid analgesics. Um, 
IV infusions of calcitonin uh, or uh, myocalcin during the week after amputation can reduce phantom limb pain. Uh, the healthcare provider prescribes other drugs on the basis of the type of uh, PLP the patient experiences. For instance, beta blocking agents such as propanolol uh, are used for constant dull burning pain. Uh, anti uh, epileptic drugs such as uh, carbamazepine or tegretol and gabapentin or neurotin may be uh, used for knife like pain. Uh, or sharp burning pain. Antispasmodics such as balcafen or lyrosol lyre may be prescribed for muscle spasms or cramping. <sighs> Excuse me. You want to do prevention of infection. The surgeon typically prescribes a broad spectrum prophylactic antibiotics before elective surgery or immediately before surgery. These may be continued in patients with traumatic amputations or those who have open wounds on the residual limb. The initial pressure dressings and drains are usually removed by the surgeon 48 to 72 hours after surgery. Inspect the wound site for signs of inflammation, e.g., redness and swelling, and monitor for wound healing. Record the appearance, amount, and odor of drainage if present. Present. Change the soft dressing every day until the sutures or staples are removed. Dressings usually uh, include an elastic bandage wrapped firmly around the residual limb after application of a sterile gauze dressing over the incision. Uh, prom promote mobility. Uh, collaborate with the phys physical therapist to begin exercises as soon as possible after surgery. If the amputation is planned, therapists may work with the patient before surgery to start muscle strengthening exercises and evaluate need for ambulatory aids such as crutches. If the patients can pr practice these devices before surgery, learning how to ambulate after surgery is much easier. ROM exercises for mattress is essential for preventing contractures with leg amputation. Uh, assist patient into a prone position every three to four hours for 20 to 30 minute periods if tolerated and not contraindicated. This position may be uncomfortable initially, but it is necessary to prevent hip flexion contractures. Uh, instruct the patient to pull the residual limb close to the other leg and contract the gluteal muscles of the buttocks. For uh, BKAs also teach how to push the residual limb down toward the bed while supporting it on a pillow after the sutures are removed. The physical therapist may begin resistive exercises with a sling and spring apparatus, which can also be used at home. <sighs> okay, and there's a bunch of stuff about prosthesis. And I think that's all I'm going to read out of this. It's all pretty much um, same old, same old now. So, yeah, that was it. Chapter 54. Okay, chapter 54. To patients... Uh, care of patients with musculoskeletal trauma. Oh my god, it's going to be dry and long. Musculoskeletal trauma. <coughs> musculoskeletal trauma accounts for about two-thirds of all injuries and is one of the primary causes of disability in the United States. It ranges from simple muscle strain to multiple bone fractures with severe tish 